So if your knees are okay to sit here, um, kneeling on the heels, that's great. Otherwise, just cross your legs, simply crossing off the legs. Lengthen the tailbone down and just to improve the position of the uh, torso, take your shoulder tips back and down. And then lengthen the shoulder blades down and away from your neck. Bring your two hands together in front of you and take a couple of inhalations and exhalations just to find the broadness across the chest, the heartbeat, and then the settling of the body just to get ready for the class ahead. Open the elbow tips out, so stretching from the upper arms all the way to the elbows, and turn the inner upper arms from the inside out, so the biceps are turning outwards. Lengthen the spine. Lengthen the crown of the head to the ceiling and the tailbone to the ground. Relax your legs wherever they are, whether they are crossed or kneeling. <clears throat> Get rid of the tension in your legs. And then pull up the abdomen away from the thighs. Take a slightly deeper inhalation than before. Open the chest. And then as you release, keep the lift in your chest, but bow your head down. Bring your hands down to your thighs. And as you raise your head, open your eyes. Okay, so. We will start in um, downward facing dog. So because it's our first stretch of the morning, we'll take the two legs <clears throat> as wide as the hips, the two hands as wide as the shoulders, flatten the fingers, flatten the palms on the floor. And then what we're going to emphasize today is on the extension of the spine. So don't worry if at first the legs are not completely straight. So what we're going to do is lift the knees and lift the thighs and come up into a downward dog, but with legs slightly bent. Try and send most of the weight to the legs, but still keep the arms straight, keep a long spine and lengthen the sides of the body. Come down again into all fours and then up again. We're just trying to warm up the hamstrings and warm up the back of the lower legs. One more time, down and up. This time around, see if you can take the heels a little bit more behind, uh, the back of the knees back, the creases of your buttocks back, and then push your hands down. So feel that you are actually separating the elbows away from the hands. So the hands are pinning to the ground, but the elbows are trying to lift. Then more weight can go to the heels, to the legs, to the hips. And then from there, release your head. Let the head and the neck hang loose. And now look up, inhale, and walk your feet to your hands. Bring your hands to your hips and come up to a standing position. So now we are going to do a couple of, similarly, we're going to do a couple of uh, forward extensions, but with the legs vertical. So a minute ago, the legs were slanting in downward dog. Now we're going to take, the, take them to vertical. If you have tight hamstrings, I would suggest having a chair or a stool or a coffee table or a couple of bricks if you have. Otherwise, we will basically go up and down 10 times just to warm up. I will take off the mic. And then <clears throat> have the two feet hip width apart and lengthen the legs up but anchor the outer edges of the feet to the ground. Now lift your arms up with an inhalation and go down, tap and come up again. 
down and up again, trying to maintain the legs in a vertical position for all time. So you don't really want the buttocks to go back in this one behind the heels, or you don't really want to scrunch up your toes either. So try, pretend you have a wall behind you and that wall will push you forward. A few more times and then we will stay down here. Last one, stay down. And now really bring the weight into the center of the feet. If your hands cannot reach the floor and you don't have any props, bring your hands to your shins, roll the shoulders back and down and look up beyond the edge of the yoga mat. So you want to really lift the chest, flatten the outer shoulder blades and carry on lengthening the sides of the body. Lift the abdomen to the spine, Elongate the spine and try and bring the center of the spine between your shoulder blades down. So whether your hands are on the ground, underneath your shoulders or on your shins, the legs are vertical, the knees are pulling up, the thighs are pulling up and you are opening across the shoulders. Now, bend your knees, inhale, bring your hands to your hips and come back up. We will do a couple of standing poses to the side now. So starting with triangle pose or trikonasana. We are also going to do it in a more dynamic way. So let me just come back a little so that the camera can catch my whole body. There we go. So from here, from the center of your yoga mat, if you have bad back, bad knees, um, don't jump, just take your legs wide. Otherwise, Bend the legs and jump them wide apart. Now, arms are super straight. We're going to pretend that we are windmills or pinwheels. So the arms need to, to remain straight. This is our axis. The spine will be our axis and the two legs are grounded to the floor. So we're going to go and touch the right shin and go wherever we reach and come back up maintaining the two arms really straight, maintaining the torso straight. So you don't want the head to go forward or move forward than the buttocks and just warm up the abdominal muscles at the sides of the body. Also lengthen the tailbone down and now we stay here. If your hand can reach down, uh, catch your ankle, Otherwise, your shin, and if it doesn't go that low, bring your elbow to the thigh. Rotate that right thigh from the inside out. And extend the tailbone on the side of the body to the left heel, whilst you're lifting the chest up to the chin. And then if you can, if you have the freedom to turn the knee, look up. Grip the hips and come back up. We'll stay on the right and we'll do the same action with the legs, but the body will turn half a turn more. So we're going to do the reverse version of this triangle pose. Stay with your right hand on the sacrum. So that right hand extends the tailbone away. And with the left arm that is absolutely straight, like the hand of a clock, we will go and touch the big toe on the right foot. So making a huge semicircle and then coming back up. One more time and up we come. We need to extend the legs, but at the same time, anchor them to the floor. Abdomen is lifting, tailbone is sliding down and away from your head. And now we stay here. You can stay catching the toes with your left hand, or if you have flexibility, carry on rotating your body, extend that left hand over to the outer right ankle. So outside that right leg. And now turn, 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 turn the, the body some more. Carry on turning to the wall behind you, and then lift your arm. Flatten the shoulder blades and lift the chest. Lengthen the tailbone down and away from your head and then grip your hips. We will come back the same way we came down.
and then have your hands on the hips, turn the whole of the right foot in slightly and the whole of the left leg out completely. So now it's the left leg that's turning from the inside out. That right leg, even though it's um, static, it's not dull. So that means that the inner thigh needs to keep pushing that way. If you feel any discomfort inside the thighs, slightly bend the legs or don't go down so low. Lock the knees, grip the hips, open the arms wide, and now simply straight uh, torso. Now the two hips and the two shoulders are facing the front, and we're going down. That was my hip clicking. Down and up again. Down and up again. One more time and up again. And we are going to stay in this position, either catching the shin, the ankle, or the thigh if you have tighter muscles. Turn the chest to face the ceiling, but at the same time, try and flatten the ribs on the, on the right side of your body. Push the left buttock forward and rotate the two shoulders back. Then with that much freedom, I mean, if your neck is stiff today, you can stay looking down at your big toe on the left. Otherwise, turn the head and look up at the top hand and lift the chest to the chin more. And now from here, grip your hips and up we come, same way we came down. So from here, bend your left arm and place the hand by your sacrum. What we want is to mark a perfect semicircle, a rainbow shape, when we go to touch the left big toe with your right fingers. So when you're ready, inhale, extend arms and legs, and spine and move down, grip the hips to come back. You really need to um, create stability with your legs and with your hips. Go back and up, down and forward. And then we stay here. Stay either catching your big toe or if you can, Carry on turning, extend the spine first. So remember you are spinning within your axis, lengthen the axis first, lengthen your spine. And then if you can, bring your right hand outside the left foot and twist some more. So twist your propeller, lift the top arm up, grip the hips, extend the spine, stick your left buttock back, and then come back up to the center, turn the feet to face the front, and then we are going to either jump or step the legs back together. Great. So we'll do another one of these um, uh, opening to the side poses. This time around we need wider legs. We will also do it dynamically so we can go up and down and warm up the heart and also do or add a little bit of cardiovascular work to our yoga asana. So stand in the center of your mat. We will do warrior pose to extension of the side. Let me show you. Fingertips to your chest and bend the knees and either step or jump your legs wider than before. So if they're not as wide, just step a little bit extra wide with your um, left foot. Bend and turn the whole of the right leg out. Check the alignment. The legs should be at the same level. Now we'll sit in warrior two position. So your right buttock needs to descend. As it descends, we want to make uh, right angle with my right leg. The body is still vertical, even though the brain wants to go to the right already. The body is vert vertical, and again, that left thigh is not dull. Imagine that someone's pulling you from that outer thigh to, uh, to take your body over to the left. Now, 
All we have to do is touch the floor and come back up. Touch the floor and up we come. Touch and up we come. When we come up, you come back into warrior pose. You don't come back into the um, uh, trikonasana, the previous pose we did before. One more time and we stay down. Extend the left side of your body, rotate the heart to the ceiling, and then lengthen the whole torso. Lengthen the torso from the tip of the left toes to the tip of the fingers, and then bring the bend knee back. Come back to the center and extend that leg. Rest your hands for a moment. Turn the right foot to face the front and then bend and turn the whole of the left leg out. So again, with this one, we're going to come into warrior pose first. Lift the abdomen, lift the pubic bone, lift the chest. So the front face of the body is lifting and the back side of the body is descending from shoulders, shoulder blades and buttocks. I was making time there to regain the uh, breath. Anchor the back foot and sit down lower. So really you want to try and aim at reaching a right angle here. Thigh parallel to the floor and shin vertical. Now, down to the floor and up we come. Down and up we come to warrior. Down and up we come to warrior. Down. And this is the last one. Stay down. If you cannot reach the floor, stay opening your um, elbow into the knee and then extend the top arm. Extend it over your head. But as a matter of fact, you want to bring it behind your head, behind your ear. So carry on extending your torso. Turn the, the face to face the floor, the ceiling, I mean, and the chest to face the ceiling. Extend the back leg, grip the hips. Up we come into warrior pose. Lengthen the two legs, fingers to the chest, and either step or jump your legs together again. Great. Just to bring the heartbeat and the um, circulation back to normal, let's come to legs as wide as a yoga mat. Fold your elbows and stay in Uttanasana restful pose. Inhale, exhale, lengthen the spine, allow the head and the neck to release down there. So fold your elbows, still extend your legs, but then you want to actually um, extend them and lengthen the body, allow the body to be uh, completely, uh, you know, relaxed. The torso, the head, the neck, they are completely relaxed. Now unfold the elbows, come with your fingers to your hips, Inhale and come back. Right. Let's do one pose that is similar to the inverted poses that we normally do. It's actually three poses together. We will do it and then we will stay in the open leg position. So from uh, the center of the mat, we might need a prop, like a chair, a couple of books or something to help us walk over to the legs and to the ground. So this time around, we will again take the legs wide open, but we'll simply come down. So some of us will reach the floor easily, and some others will need a couple of books or bricks or something to put your hands on so that your torso is absolutely parallel to the floor. Outer edges of your feet need to be anchored to the ground and you're lifting the inner arches. Roll the shoulders back and down and lift the chest. So look beyond the top of the mat. 
We are now going to come over to the right without lifting the torso up. So turn the whole of the left leg well in, walk over to the right, and as you walk over, start turning the right leg out. Now extend the two legs. This is a beautiful exercise, especially if you're a runner or um, cyclist or you walk a lot. This, this will stretch the front leg. Lengthen the legs. Make the outer left heel stamp on the ground. So you really don't want all the way to come forward. Extend the torso more and revolve the thigh of the back leg from back to front. Now, let's do this as if we were doing downward dog. We started with downward dog, remember? So stretch your hands as far away from you as you can, almost as if we wanted to do downward dog, but there's a leg in the middle. And then release your body, release your chest, release your head and your neck on top of that right leg. Keep extending the right leg. So the hamstrings, and the calf muscles of the, of the back leg are working strongly. Now, bring your hands back level with your shoulders. Turn the two feet to face the front and one more time we're back facing the center. Realign your legs because one of them may have gone uh, misaligned. And then turn the whole of the right leg in. Go over to the left and extend both legs. Again, the heel of the right foot has to be completely on the ground and then lengthen the spine, push the big toe mount and inner heel of the left foot strongly down to then give you that sucking action of that left thigh. Now, your left buttock needs to go back and the right buttock is rolling from back to front. Lift the abdomen and look up. Now, take your hands further away from your body as if you were going to be doing downward facing dog. So extend the sides of the body first and then descend. When you descend, pull up the knees, pull up the thighs. Don't allow the legs to bend. And then inhale, come back up. Bring your hands back to level with your shoulders. Turn the two feet to face the front. And we're going to stay here in a relaxing or going down Prasarita Padatanasana, which is this pose with wide legs. If you can, you will bend your elbows and start walking your hands back level with your feet and then descend your torso. It doesn't matter if the torso is not touching the ground or the head is not touching the ground. What you want is actually to be descending the body. If you are stiffer in the um, hamstrings, catch the legs, the outer legs from wherever you can reach, bend your elbows and descend the body. Otherwise, stay with your elbows bent over here underneath your feet and extend the legs. Inhale, walk your hands forward. Zigzag your legs, heels and toes, and heels and toes, and heels and toes, and then sit back down. We're not going to go up from here. We're simply going to stay here, and we'll do a twist in this position. So this twist will have also some, a little bit of abdominal muscle work. Um, so we were going to bring uh, make sure you have enough room behind you. And we're going to have almost as if we were doing boat pose, you know, boat pose is this one here. We are not going to have the torso completely straight, but we will instead only stay balancing on the right butt cheek. So we'll lean back a little, bring the legs up off the ground, and then start trying to extend the torso and the legs 
but only balancing on my right cheek. Now, one more time. Extend, lift the chest, compact yourselves. Try and create, uh, maintain the thighs, the knees together. So compact yourselves, still balancing on the right back cheek. Open. And then come back to the center. We'll, we'll go over to the left. So you don't need to turn around. I'm just turning around to face the camera. First of all, you are um, hugging your knees, hugging your shins, then turn towards the left butt cheek and slightly lean back. Take the knees with you and cover the heels of the floor. Now from this compact pose, we want to do both pose. So lifting your legs, lifting the chest, but I am only just managing to balance on my left butt. Lift again and compact yourselves. So you're leaning back, but you're trying to bring your knees closer and closer to you. That's where the abdominal muscles start playing. Lift the chest, lift the legs, and then come back to the center. Just to release all these extensions, uh, sorry, contractions, uh, we're going to extend the abdominals uh, now. So try and bring, if your knees allow, try and bring your legs close and close and close to you. And then we will aim at catching the ankles from the front. So I'll, I'll show you. We want to try and aim at catching the ankles from underneath, but keeping the soles of the feet together. So from the side, it looks something like this. I will bring my legs together to me, and then one at a time, I'll take them to the ground. Take my two feet together to the ground. That means I will really have to extend my torso. It's almost an arch in the back. Of course, it will depend on your anatomy because if you have longer arms, this will come easy for you. So it's a Sutta Baddha Konasana, catching the, uh, the heels, the, uh, sorry, the ankles from underneath and lifting the chest. So the shoulders will roll down and away from my neck. The front of the um, trunk will absolutely stretch and then release the hands, let the legs go. You can take your um, relaxation position from here with the two legs, uh, two knees apart and two feet together, or you can simply extend the legs, lengthen, spend the moment here, lengthening the waist away from your um, rest of the spine, lengthening the neck away from your shoulders, and then rest for a moment, Closing your eyes, breathing in and out. Inhale and exhale. Completely. Relax the facial muscles, the tongue in your mouth, and the joints of the jaw. And then as and when you're ready, Bring one hand at a time to rest where they are comfortable in your body. Slide the heels along the ground, also one at a time to bring the knees up. Roll over onto the right side and come up to a sitting position. 
Lift the head at last. Thank you, body and mind, for being healthy enough to allow us to do this session today. And thank the teachers before us who showed us the way so generously. Namaste. Thank you for joining. Have a lovely weekend. And I'll see you next week. Thank you so much, Rosanna. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Namaste. Have a lovely weekend. Namaste. You too, guys. Glad you enjoyed it. Lovely. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>